we have so much to explore out here on the Transylvania map of Way the Hunter that perhaps it actually is a good thing that a recent patch actually caused a really interesting bug. Basically, a lot of animals will display as young even if they are adults or mature, and that can make it difficult to know which animals to actually take out to improve the genetics. So, rather than risk messing things up that we've worked so hard for over in Nez Perce Valley, I doubt we come to Transylvania and just kind of see what we can find. And almost straight away, we get onto a herd of red deer with a three star mature in it. Now, most of the stags that I'm spotting so far are either mature or adult, so at least those labels are working. But I think we're going to go ahead and take that shot. Now, one thing that is tough, they almost still to me appear as though they are young, like really light in color. I don't know if that's related or not. Maybe we just haven't had that many opportunities to get really close looks at Red Deer. I don't know that we had the 18 power scope, in fact, last time that we were on this map, so it could be that. I'm not sure. But I'm going to guess a 3 star mature probably wouldn't have that good a chance of being a 5 star. And especially with what's going on right now with the labels, I more or less intend to take anything decent that we see today, because we're just not going to really know. And at the end of a pretty easy to follow blood trail, our first red stag of the hunt. Now, I'm really hoping he's not like just barely into the mature state, because like I said, he still looks fairly young. Managed to double lung him there at 163 yards, which is almost perfectly on the zero distance. And he is a 77% genetic red stag, so certainly one worth taking out. Honestly, a nice looking stag, especially in the harvest screen here really see the length of the brow tines, but we'll sell that. And I mentioned at the beginning that we had a lot of territory yet to explore on Transylvania, so what I did was go ahead and purchase the two areas in the north that we didn't have access to. So we'll be making our way up to these lodges eventually. The only one that we don't have access to now is the southeast, but I think that'll give us a lot of opportunity to run into Red Deer, and hopefully things are going to continue to work out in terms of the age labels. I know there were a lot of young 5 stars being spotted, and really the only place that it matters, I would say, is going to be with like 2 stars in particular. If you see a 2 star mature, it's certainly worth taking out. If you see a 2 star adult, a lot of times you want to let something like that go, so I think that's where it can get the most difficult. But as for exploring new territory, I think it'll be okay for the most part to go ahead and take out what we see. That is so cool, our first ever chamois. It is just a young female, but we're literally right by the lodge up here. Now, technically, as I said, some of the labeling is a little bit weird, so that's not guaranteed to actually be a young, but I wonder if there are any more down in there. They tend to, as far as I know, travel in decent sized groups, so I would assume there's some just kind of out of sight. I have no idea how we've gotten ourselves into this position. There's one 30 yards away, just sitting here feeding, and I guess it's because we've just been sitting still. There is another one visible now down here down the hill. It is a one-star male, so worst case, that's the one I plan to take. And by the way, if you sit still, and I don't mean like spinning around and using binoculars, I mean actually walking any direction, stuff generally does not notice you, so we should be okay to sit here and wait and see if anything else comes up over the hill, but 30 yards is kind of close. I do think, though, it's getting pretty late. About 6.30 in game now, and I really don't like how close that one's sitting, so I think we'll try to take this guy. 136 yards, it should be a fairly simple frontal shot, especially with the 308. So let's see if we can get that in there. Now he insta drop, which I think is actually going to be a problem. As I recall, there is a bit of a bug with insta-dropped animals right now to where they actually seemingly disappear. So I want to try, if we can, maybe getting that female. I don't think we got it, but I'm pretty confident this male is going to be invisible. Oh, actually, I'm kind of glad we missed. He's laying right here in the grass. I know there is an issue with insta-dropped animals, but looks like we lucked out in this scenario. I actually shot it right through the heart, so I'm pretty happy with that with our shot placement. Only 135 yards, and again, the 308 is at least kind of overpowered for Shammy. It isn't 
above the required energy, so nothing too crazy. But he is a 17% young male. Now, again, could be older, hard to say, especially given the percentage. But a nice little chamois as our first. Wow. About a half a pound of meat loss. It's only a 60 pound animal. I would have guessed the 308 would be too much, but evidently not. Anyway, though, we are right outside the outpost that we're heading to, so we'll go and unlock that. And then I think we'll likely end up resting back to the next morning. We have a pretty long run over to the next area, and it might be interesting with all that water there what we might run into. Now that is a much better sized group of chamois, so we're already going back in the wrong direction. The outpost is three miles that way, and I want to go and take a look here. Now, I am really intrigued by the 308 not being too much for the chamois. So, for one, that was part of the reason I was taking those shots as that female was running away. I thought it was way overpowered and just about anything would bring them down, and that may still be the case, but we know it is a perfect size weapon for them according to the meat loss. And we'll try to see here. I think it's going to be really tough to actually get to spot them. Maybe if we can get up on this area. Now it's tough to know for sure because of course we know there is the issue right now with the ages. But one thing that I'm kind of noticing as these guys move around. This one looks to be in a little bit better shape. There are three males, all one star youngs. Now the star rating does show up correctly. They are all one star, but I kind of wonder if the ones that look like they're in better shape are older or if they just have better genetics. So I guess we'll try to take this guy just to see if we can find out. So once again, able to drop that guy and able to drop that guy with no issues. There also are Mouflon up here, according to those uh, sound analysis, so that's interesting. Was not aware there were any up here. There are some all the way down in the south as well, so they must be a species you can find in a lot of areas. But let's actually see. I'm most interested in the genetics here, and also it's going to show up as young in the harvest screen as well, so no way to know for sure other than just taking the shot and seeing what it says. Heart shot again though. Pretty happy with that. Now you do see like the 308 being able to hit the heart and have that much extra penetration at that angle would appear to be overpowered. But like we saw in the last one, evidently it is not. So that guy is 76.66% on the genetics. Now, I kind of forget. I think I shot one that looked like it was in good shape. Again, probably not an adult then, if it is a one star and has that high of a genetic potential. So that's interesting. I think depending on how long this bug is a thing, it could become really important to learn how to field judge really accurately. And I at least thought I could see a difference in, like, actual fitness of those animals. I really had no intention of making this hunt a chamois hunt. I was planning on getting after red deer and stuff like that, but these mountains you can just see forever, and they're perfect environment for chamois, and we're just continually running into more herds. We'll sneak in, we're not too far off from where we can spot them. And I hope at least there could be a two star in this herd. I think we've seen five males now, all one stars. Gotta think eventually we'll find a good one. And we do have a two star. Now, almost certainly that is not a young. And this is where it gets tough. If it's a mature, then it's definitely one we want to take out. If it's an adult, it very well could turn into something a whole lot better. But. I think we're going to take him anyway just for the sake of trying to learn here. As soon as this one will step out of our way, even though the angle's not good, we've seen that 308 has just insane penetration on the chamois, so I'm not worried about the angle that much, as long as we can get a clean shot through there. And I th think that's our chance, so looks like we got him pretty good. Anytime they slow down like that, generally that means they are going to go down. Now, there are at least some other chamois over in that direction too. But hopefully that two star is not gonna go too far here. But yeah, good deal, over 300 yards. Pink blood again, and I would have to think that a chamois at that distance even still won't be going far. Lots of pink blood up here. And generally speaking, they start to bleed more the farther they go. And I've talked about that before, how that is a really good simulation of real life as the chest cavity fills up with blood. So the fact that we're seeing a lot this early on 
also would be indicative of a fairly quick track. And in fact, it is laying right here, so good deal. Didn't even need to use the Hunter Sass really for that. And uh, I guess I had it on. I didn't know that I did, but we didn't really need it. Anyway, you can see the angle there. We actually hit the liver and right lung, and the rest of the damage was done from the bullet shockwave, but funny to bring him down quickly. It was, yet again, about 75% on the genetics, so most likely an adult at 2-star. 75% would most likely get around 4-star at the peak, but luckily, it hasn't caused us a problem. We haven't shot anything that's like 95% and a 1-star yet, so we're doing okay. And, uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll just stay up here in the mountains the rest of the time. I still want to get over to that other outpost, but we are still two and a half miles away, and I'm kind of tempted to head this way. Now, if I'm right, these should be the same chamois that we spooked when shooting the last one. And yet again, we're having a lot of success being able to spot them at long distances, about 400 yards there. So we'll have to scoot in a bit and get them spotted, but I think at least based on where they are, we should be able to do that. Now, getting the shot off is going to be another matter. None of them are at a good angle, but at the very least, if they continue uphill, we should be able to identify them all. Ooh, there's a three-star, and that really is where things get tough. If that's a three-star adult, there is no way I'd be shooting that. We'd be taking a really close look at where we are on the map, and luckily, I think we have the zone where these Shiami should be going back to, so I don't think it's worth the risk. I'd love to shoot it and see how big it is. And again, we just don't know what the age on that guy is. I don't even know what to look for in terms of what would identify a Shiami as being older. Like in Mule Deer, you can see kind of the grayish color. You know, it may say in the encyclopedia. Actually, it kind of does. Older Shiami have bigger necks compared to the younger ones, which I think is what I was seeing with the ones earlier. Their belly also changes from straight and narrow to wider on the sides and round underneath. Now, I don't know how much identification of that we can make at 300 yards through our scope, but we can try. I mean, honestly, I don't see a ton of differences between the three star and any of the other males in this herd. So I'm going to hope he's still fairly young. And I think we'll just go ahead and hit that guy. I'm not sure how big that one is, but... 300 yards, I think they're all 1 stars other than the big ones, so let's go for that. Looks like we hit him good. We can see the blood from here. And now we need to try to identify the right one. He's kind of lacking behind. So I think it's maybe that one. And he's going to drop right there in sight, so good deal. We'll be able to get to that one with no tracking needed. And hopefully we're making the right call here. I am hopeful at least that the update is going to be fairly soon to fix all the age and stuff but again oh got a campsite right in front of us that worked out well but i am actually sort of happy with this opportunity to try to really learn about field judging without having to rely on the animal analysis that much i know you can play on ranger mode without any hunter sense and that would be what you have to do so one day I'd like to be good enough at that that I really don't need to rely on the spotting info and when you're forced into trying to learn it to make the right decisions, I guess that's when some of the, the best education and stuff like that happens. So hard to say from here just how old this one may have been. It kind of does have that larger body on it though, so maybe a little bit older. Right lung shot only at that distance. Primarily it looks like as we hit the shoulder a lot of our board energy went into that, but still 300 yards away brought him down within sight. And that was a 63%, so could have been adult, could have been young, hard to say, at a 1 star. But yet again, another chamois down in sight with the 308. That gun is just about perfect for them, and I wouldn't have guessed that. It took a while, but we have found some fallow deer bucks. There's actually... It looks like at least four out here, and the best one is right here at the front. Now, it is a two-star. Hard to say if it's an adult or young or what it is, but I think probably we're going to go ahead and take that. Now, it's tough where they are. There could be others, but the wind is just not good here, and I think we're probably best off going ahead and taking the shot. So, angle is not great, but we've seen the 308 do pretty well even at angles like this, so... 
That does appear to be a decent buck. We'll go ahead and hit him there. He is not going to be going absolutely anywhere by the looks of things. And let's at least attempt to make sure that there's no huge ones running off down in here. I think the only fallow deer buck that we've shot, if I remember correctly, is the four star that we shot on stream. And to be honest, I don't know that I even did look to see what the genetic potential was on that one. That may have been a mistake shooting that, I'm not sure. That was still in the time frame when I thought mature animals could no longer grow, which now obviously we know they can. And again, that kind of plays into why it can be so important to identify the age of the animal just by looking at them because all you get is mature. You don't know how far into that maturity cycle they are. And it can be really good to be able to see that. And that's something we worked on in our last video over on Nesbirth Valley. So I'm not sure how to get over there just yet, maybe on this side. And I was just thinking about it as we found our way across there. I think this is only the third different species we've shot today. It's felt like we've done so much exploring around, but actually heart shot again is really interesting. We do incredibly well with heart shots on Transylvania. Not so much over on the Nesbars Valley map. I wonder why that would be. It seems like it just happens every single shot regardless, but a 72% genetic male, probably an adult, hard to say, but 400 credits for that. And what I had been planning on doing was actually going over to the spot where we shot that four star and just taking a look over in those fields and seeing if anything is visible. So might as well continue with that. Got about a mile to go there. Now it is interesting. We can see these red deer. It seems the age shows up correctly. We have a couple of mature stags there. That guy also is a one star mature. And then I don't know about the hinds. I mean, that one shows as adults, so I would assume they are all working properly as well. I don't know why that would be, but none of these stags are offering a decent shot. So what we might do is attempt to shoot this one over here in the neck. It should be pretty doable to make that shot as long as he'll just sort of sit still. That or if this guy would offer a better shot opportunity, then again, he's going to bed back down. So I guess... We'll go back to the original plan. If he'll just turn back. I think we got him. I never saw him go up and out of there, and it looked like there was a good bit of blood. We did indeed. Not too bad then. So for that guy, which we actually did manage to keep as a neck shot, so not ruining the trophy with the headshot, that was a 80%. So this is where I think this is a red deer that would be past his prime. That's where I get the idea because, as I mentioned before, it seems like 80% genetic potential, really any animals, can get right around to 4 star at their peak. This guy's a 1 star, and best I can figure that's gotta be what's going on in that scenario, but not a bad deal. He was, I mean, 4 pounds of meat loss from a neck shot, I guess that could make sense if you're using the neck meat, but he was out there at about 130, and I think we even aimed a little bit low to compensate for the zero distance of 164, but let's run this last five or 600 yards. Just go and see if there's anything over in that other area. And at least as far as I can tell, there don't seem to be any deer out in the open right now. And it's probably a little bit late. There's a good chance they would be resting at the moment. So I'm not too surprised to see that, but pretty cool spot up here to kind of wrap up this video. Just standing right on top of the rocks, which is roughly the same spot from which we spotted the red deer, uh, our biggest red deer still, the four star that we shot fairly early on in our play of this game, but I like it. That was really fun going up into the mountains. I, Like I said, I had no intention of hunting chamois so much, but they were a blast. I'm really encouraged by seeing Mouflon up there. The five star Mouflon look amazing, and maybe that's what we'll focus on next time we get to Transylvania, but between finding the chamois, seeing the Mouflon up there, and at least learning a bit more about field judging animals and making decisions as to which are maybe a little further along and need taken out and which should be given more time. I'm pretty happy with this video. No big huge trophies, but a lot of things learned and a lot of knowledge we can put to use in the later hunts. But anyway, that is going to do it for this video. So as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.